Hello, Balba Tube people! My name is JJ, I am a friend of Professor Balba, and I'm here today to tell you about 10 Pokémon who are actually references to obscure Japanese things you might not be aware of. First off, we have Chingling, who is obviously supposed to be a bell, but not just any bell. He is based on what the Japanese call a Suzu, which is a kind of giant jingle bell that the Japanese have at traditional Shinto shrines. They're usually attached to a giant red and white cord, which is what you pull on before praying to get the god's attention. Japanese gods are notoriously hard of hearing. Chingling evolves into Chimiko, who also takes the form of a traditional Japanese bell thing. He resembles a furin, which is a traditional Japanese wind chime made of a little glass bowl with a string and a piece of paper dangling from it. The piece of paper usually has a calligraphy poem on it about nature or beauty or some junk. Talking of pieces of paper, the Pokémon Jirachi is a salute to the Japanese Tanabata Festival. This is a thing where people write their hopes and dreams on long strips of paper and then hang them on bamboo trees in the hopes that the stars will make them come true. I participated in one when I was in Japan, but my dream of leaving Japan early did not come true. Snowrunt is holding a little triangular hood thing over his head. This is called a Yuki Mino, and it's a traditional Japanese raincoat made out of straw that farmers would wear when it snowed. It was pointy so that the snow wouldn't pile up on the top, and it had special armholes so that something as minor as a blizzard wouldn't let the farmers miss even one day of their backbreaking agricultural labor. Bronzong is another one of the many, many bell-themed Pokémon. He is based on a Dotaku, which is an ancient style of Japanese bronze bell that was common in the first century. Apparently archaeologists do not know exactly what these were used for, but my guess is it involved ringing. Speaking of archaeological weirdness, Clay Doll is based on a clay doll made by the ancient indigenous people of Japan thousands of years ago. Eventually Japan was of course taken over by Chinese migrants, but some of the indigenous people are still around and they're still able to sell their clay dolls to ignorant gaijin tourists like me. Ninetales, the nine-tailed fox, is not just some sicko furry thing. He's based on a Kyube no Kitsune, which is a traditional character from Japanese folk mythology. Japanese folk legends often feature magical fox characters, and in the world of Japanese folklore, a fox grows more tails as it gets older, with a nine-tailed fox being the oldest and most magical. This is in contrast to nine-tailed furries, whose only magical power is difficulty sitting down. Thunderous, the thunder Pokémon, is based on Raijin, the Japanese god of thunder. He hangs out in the clouds and is surrounded by a ring of drums that he bangs to make with the thunder. The Japanese also believe that he steals the belly buttons of naughty children. It's true, look it up. Everyone's so sick of Meowth, it's easy to forget that he has a Japanese connection too. That coin on his forehead obviously doesn't look like a normal coin, and that's because it is a Koban coin, which is the style of coin the Japanese used during the samurai times. The Japanese mint still produces solid gold Koban coins for collectors, and of course there are Hello Kitty ones too. And finally, everyone's favorite, far-fetched. In Japan, they have this saying when something unexpectedly convenient happens, they say it's like a duck came carrying an onion. The idea is that because the Japanese enjoy eating duck onion soup, it would obviously be very convenient if a duck was suicidal enough to pick the ingredients for you and then waddle over to your kitchen. But you know what else is convenient? When your friend with a much more successful YouTube channel than you asks you to make a guest video for him. If you're interested in seeing more videos about Japan and video games and politics and all sorts of other junk, you can click over here and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again to Professor Bulba and happy Pokemoning!